Um, but the last agency that we'll cover today is uh, DISA. Uh, as we all know, DISA is a combat support agency that provides C2 and information capabilities to the warfighter. Uh, DISA employs 6,000 employees and is based up at Fort Meade. Their total operating budget for FY14 is going to be $9.4 billion. Um, about 10% of DISA's budget is distributed between your new procurement and RDT&E in the coming year. Uh, the IT budget request this year is $5.2 billion, which is nearly a 5% increase over last year. Now you can see that web infrastructure is far and away the largest BRM category, followed by IT infrastructure, maintenance, uh, and battle space networks. Now DISA did experience a pretty significant reorganization this year so that it could be better aligned with the JIE. Um, so bear with me for a little while because I know that this is interesting for people who cover DISA. Um, for those of you uh, who don't cover DISA, you might want to go ahead and pray to your iPhone for a bit. Um, so to begin with, the new office for the JIE was uh, created under Brigadier General Brian Dravis serving as the director of the Joint Technical Synchronization Office. Um, Dave Stickley is head of the new JIE Compliance Office. The CIO and Enterprise Services Directorates have been merged, and, the new office, and a new office was created within Enterprise Services for CRM. Now, these moves are aimed to provide an end-to-end -end solution for the provision and implementation of Enterprise Services. Dave Bennett is going to remain the CIO, but he's going to take on additional responsibilities replacing Alfred Rivera as head of the Enterprise Services Directorate, or the ESD. Alfred Rivera's new role is as Vice Director of the Strategic Planning Group under Tony Montemorano. Um, Tony Montemorano's office, the Strategic Planning Group, was consolidated into DISA's Financial Management Office in order to better align program objectives with financial execution. The Field Security Office was consolidated into PEO Mission Assurance, which is overseen by Mark Orndorff. And the deck operations were moved into the operations directorate under Larry Huffman, who is now in charge of day-to-day -day operations for the decks. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, Major General Alan Lynn uh, left Army Netcom to assume the role of vice director of DISA, replacing Rear Admiral David Simpson. Now, as I just mentioned, Dave Bennett is still serving as DISA CIO, um, but he did also take over for Alfred, director, uh, Alfred Rivera as director of the ESD. Um, ESD supports over 3 million people that use over 2,800 applications, using, leveraging more than 3.7 petabytes of storage. ESD provides processing capability, communications, and storage to support DOD services, and actually has become DOD's main provider uh, of personnel, logistics, accounting, and medical records processing. Now, offices for uh, COTS vendors to target within ESD are going to be the technical program office because it oversees deployment and implementation of the ESD's technical architecture. I'd also point out the CIO's office um, because it, of course, provides the focal point of governance for ESD and DISA's DEX. Now, let's take a look at PEO MA, our mission assurance led by Mark Orndorff. Uh, PEO MA manages information assurance and network operations capabilities for DOD. It provides secure and interoperable net-centric solutions necessary to secure and operate the global information grid, or GIG. The NetOps division supports COCOMs and joint forces in decision-making and mission assurance by providing technical leadership to enhance situational awareness. Uh, next, the CND Solutions Division provides security and computer network defense along with situational awareness of the gig through acquiring and fielding network security products and solutions. Lastly, the Identif Identity Management Division provides encryption, biometrics, applications, and business process management for their customers to maintain DOD's public key infrastructure. Finally, within DISA, you'll want to approach PEO C2C, led by Martin Gross. Uh, C2C provides lifecycle management of the C2 portfolio, including GEEKS, GCSS, JC2, and MNIS. Both GEEKS and GCSS provide a joint logistics common operational picture to make sure support is in the right place at the right time. And going back to our overarching drivers of interoperability and common operating pictures, you can see that DISA is at the center of it all. Their goal is to have one system that can pull from multiple data sources to provide one complete picture. And here we've listed out DISA's top 10 contract vehicles. Uh, most of their spending is dedicated to IT. The vehicle with the highest utilization was Encore 2. Um, with Alliant SB coming in second, which both account for more than the rest of the top 10 contract vehicles combined. Now, in terms of contractors, DISA spreads its work pretty evenly across a number of different companies, although SAIC is the, the uh, most largely leveraged company. 
Of course, DISA released a strategic plan uh, for 2013 to 2018 last September with the purpose of identifying strategic goals and key objectives. Uh, the agency addressed four cross-cutting goals and eight strategic shifts that we covered during last year's briefing. Um, and those goals and shifts are all reflected in DISA's FY14 budget documents. Um, it's clear that they recognize the need to transition to a network-centric environment to improve how information is shared across DOD. They specifically called out a need to eliminate bandwidth constraints and to improve infrastructure. And the agency will continue to emphasize a data center consolidation, shrinking their data centers, their inventory, from 194 to 12. DISA is also looking at reworking its acquisition practices to cut costs as well. It plans to rely on a more heavily uh, centralized strategy, leveraging a few multiple award contracts and multiple award vehicles that will purchase more commercial IT products and focus purchasing around interoperable capabilities. Now moving on to DISA's programs, uh, GeeksJ is an investment run out of PEO C2C. It's a command and control investment, joint command and control investment that produces enhancements to the joint operations planning and execution system, or JOPS. It consists of hardware, software, interfaces, and standards that provide intelligence and planning information. And this program is focused on reducing sustainment costs through appropriate COTS and Agile development products. Lieutenant Colonel John Dukes said that the pro program costs will overrun if Geeks doesn't utilize more COTS solutions. Uh, last year, they began a COTS tech refresh to man minimize the impact of end-of-life issues and provided software updates enterprise-wide. Now, one of the major strategies to realize more savings in the future is to leverage more open source products. Although this has been a point of contention um, in, in the recent past uh, due to security concerns. Uh, the investment began in 1995 and will end in 2018 and will spend almost $220 million in FY14. Um, SAIC and Northrop have both won awards in support of GeeksJ through Encore 2. DISA's Network Services Directorate, led by Cindy Moran, supports global voice, video, messaging, and data networks. And this is one of the offices we weren't able to get to talk about today, but Network Services is responsible for a number of duties, such as evolving gig networks, transport, nipper and cipernet sustainment, and of course, the DISN. The DISN is the, the network that allows for data exchange and interoperability to mission partners, including voice, video, VPN, transport, and messaging. In FY14, the DISN program has over $2.1 billion in funds, and program manager Jesse Showers plans to continue with a tech refresh of end-of-life equipment and infrastructure upgrades. They'll be implementing improved architecture to support a growing number of connected devices and users. Uh, the major contractors that have supported the DISN program have been SAIC, Harris, and AT&T and they will be integral in the purchase of network and systems development and management as well as enterprise architecture and network security products for the coming year. Now the final this uh, program that we'll cover today is the DEX investment. Um, as you all know the 12 enterprise data centers provide mainframe and server processing operations, data storage, and C4 capabilities across all of the DoD. Uh, the DEC investment is a huge part of DOD's efforts to rationalize computing at the enterprise level, thereby improving efficiency. Now, with the exception of the Navy, all of the DOD is moving towards using, using these core data centers that absorb the functions of the disparate component data centers. Uh, DIS's DECs in CONUS, as we mentioned earlier in the presentation, do provide the backbone for the JIE infrastructure. They facilitate the implementation of the data center consolidation initiative, um, and they host enterprise and cloud services. Now, with the closure of the Chambersburg and the Dayton sites, the total number of decks comes to 12. That's nine CONUS, three OCONUS, and the locations uh, of the decks will be included in your territory planner. Now, the next year, we'll hold a lot in store for the decks, including upgrading storage capacity, improving data center monitoring, and improving connectivity to blade servers. Additionally, they'll shoot to increase network bandwidth, consistency, and standardization. Um, the decks still fall under DISA's enterprise services purview, and they're managed by Matt McLaughlin. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, General Hawkins announced that day-to-day -day operations for the DEX are going to be run by Larry Huffman at the operations directorate. Now, in the coming year, DISA has over $1.2 billion to spend on the program, so it's very well funded. <laughs>